I was watching this documentary about food deserts and it got me to thinking. The whole gist of it is that if you live in a bad neighborhood or a poor neighborhood that your food choices are going to be very limited and what you can get will be highly processed foods and fast foods, but you won't be able to get quality, nutritious foods. And I began to think about that. About 16, 17 years ago, on old, on uh, Camp Creek, which is a black neighborhood, Publix, Walmart, all of these stores came to these black neighborhoods. But these were not low income black neighborhoods. They were high income black neighborhoods. And I keep seeing the same trend over and over and over again, that, you know, during the interview, there was a lady that's like, they took all our food options. And part of it is, because I've been doing a lot of research today, I've been was watching a lot of stuff. I have a lot of information in my head. And it is true that everyone cannot pull themselves up by the bootstraps. This is true. Part of my journey was my grandmother, Maddie Cameron, who was a school teacher who had a college degree. That one element in my life was a major game changer in my life because my grandmother was my mother and she was my stay at home parent and she taught me how to read. That one step right there is what is part of the reason I'm here where I'm at today because I didn't get here by myself. I look at the neighborhood that I grew up in, very, very supportive. Whenever I would like knock on doors and selling stuff for schools, all of these old people, the Glovers, the Lanier's, the Jobs, they would buy. They were very, very supportive. So that whole, it takes a village to raise a child. I had a village, I had a lot of support. And something else too, I look at, because the more and more I go upon looking at success, from the age, from the time I was born to the time I left to join the military, I never moved. I had tremendous stability. And that's really important from a mental standpoint. Having the ability to think that things are going to be the same tomorrow as they were today. Many folks, as I've come to know that, as I got out to uh, Alabama, I joined the military, and I started meeting people from across the country. I started meeting these girls who had friends who had been killed in high school. I didn't know anything about that. I knew nothing about that. And it, it shaped them because your critical years, your, 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 your tender years, are so crucial to future development because even though we did not have indoor plumbing until I was about seven, I had the upbringing of a middle-class child from ages from being a baby till about 11 when my grandmother died. And that's when things got a little dicey. But from zero to 11, during my formative years, I had a stay-at-home parent, never went to daycare, I had stability, I had love, I was cared for, I was taken care of, and I was taught well. That zero period to 11 is the reason I'm where I'm at today. Because if you look at it, because I was watching something today, you know what is one of the biggest indicators of you being wealthy when you're an adult? Being born wealthy. Typically, you will live and die in the same social class that you were born in. And it's very hard for people to move up social classes. So what I did is kind of remarkable because I not only eclipsed my class, I shattered it. I went from what we call it working class to the 1% and I've been in the 1% probably like 20 years. And it's, it's a different thing because now I'm getting, you know, like I said, I'm doing a lot of research and understanding the pathologies 
of poverty, the pathologies of people being poor, the pathologies of people being stuck in generational poverty. And I've come to a few conclusions going back to this food desert thing. People don't know what they don't know. And this is a critical part of why so many people are in a bad situation. They don't know what they don't know. And also culture is a part of it. Culture, because I did this video, video before this one where I was talking about the seventies was a great time to grow up. Black culture was so beautiful back then. It was so loving, it was so affectionate, and it was nothing like what we have today. So culture is a big part of it. Family, well, whether you were an intact family, even though it was a roundabout way, because you know I had two, I grew up in a two female household, but my grandmother was kind of like my mother and father. She was a no, no nonsense type of person. I remember one day, because my grandma used to smoke, and she was like, I was like, Grandma, I won't be like you. I wanted to smoke a cigarette. She didn't say a word. She just lit one up and passed it to me. And I inhaled on that bad boy and I was choking and rolling around on the ground. I have not smoked since. I don't know if that was her way to warn me to, you know, because whatever, you know, she just like, well, I guess smoking isn't for you. And that was how, that was the end, the beginning and end of that. So my grandma was really, really practical and she was really, really um, strong-willed, very, very smart, very, very loving. And I go back and I look back at this because I've always had this faith that I would do well. And I think that came from that period of, of being loved and cared for from being zero to 11 years and having a stay-at-home parent. So. What I'm looking at, you know, I'm reading the tea leaves. 2021 is going to be a rough year for a lot of people. It's going to be a rough, rough year. Even if the Democrats win the Senate and the presidency, if they don't win it, it's really going to be rough because the Democrats are going to create all type of stimulus programs. But one of the things that I am seeing and, you know, studying the, the, the pathology of why some people are successful and why other people aren't successful. Going back to my experience, I had someone successful to model myself off of that I intimately knew. That is very key. If your parents are good people, they love you, they care for you, they're good people, but they, they haven't been exposed to anything and they just, like my mother, she was a strange, strange creature. I remember one day we were just having the conversation. I think I was 15 or 16. And she said, if you get a girl pregnant, just bring the baby home. Beginning and end of the conversation, I thought, I'm not getting anybody pregnant. I don't want any kids to be growing up like I'm growing up. I'm not doing that. And to an extent, because my grandmother and my my mother used to fight a lot. They would battle because my grandmother, because, you know, even my Uncle Martin said it, my mother was strong-willed and she wanted to do what she wanted to do. And my grandmother was trying to give her wisdom and she didn't want to accept it. And I remember the battles, you know, because they would be epic. I mean, they would go at it. And part of the reason is my grandmother was the stabilizing force in my life. She was the grounding thing. And I got something with her that the other two kids did not get. And, you know, all, how does this relate to food deserts? I'm, I'm getting there, give me a little bit of time. One of the issues with the food desert people is they don't know what they don't know. So you'll have a man and a woman who will get married and they'll work these low wage jobs and they will have relations and produce children and then their children are going to typically model their behavior later in life. So essentially, if you see a poor little kid with average poor parents, the chances of that kid growing up to have a similar lifestyle are roughly 90 something percent. 
And this is what creates these food deserts because like I said, I talked about off of uh, Cascade area and off the Camp Creek area. They got all of the nice grocery stores, they got Walmart, they got Home Depot because the income for the neighborhood was there because these corporations are not going to build a business in a place they're gonna lose money. They're just not gonna do it. So if the black area of town is wealthy, it will get the development, it will get the stores, it will get the conveniences. But if it's not, what's gonna happen is they're gonna get what I call scavenger businesses. These are gonna be like the bodegos, the little grocery stores, the little, the little rip-off places. That's what they're gonna get because these bigger corporations are not going to put anything in there to um, help people out because if they can't make a profit, because like literally I sit where I sit within 10 square miles, there is no less than 300 restaurants. One, two, three, in less than 10 miles, there's gotta be 40 to 50 grocery stores from Whole Foods, Publix, Kroger, Costco, and Walmart. So literally, in I mean, 10 square miles, 40 grocery stores. There's no food desert here, um, but it's the income. It's the income. And you know, going back to, because one of the things I'm working on for Savage Finance, because it came to me that the art of holding was too much for a lot of the folks who were just getting beginning. So I'm coming up with something called the consult, the corporate toolbox. Y'all gonna like this because essentially what we're gonna do with that is I'm gonna teach you how to start your first corporation and then prep that corporation to later become your holding company and how to get business credit for that corporation and a whole bunch of business classes, stuff that you need to have a corporation, to start a corporation, to become a business owner, because I'm gonna revamp a lot of stuff. So it's almost the end, it's what, August 22nd. So this is probably gonna be coming out the beginning of September. And essentially what I'm gonna do is teach the people who are interested on how to play the corporate game. The corporate game, because like there's one, there's three videos that my editors, my editors are working on two of them. I think one of them, they'll be coming out next week and the week after, but talking about the corporate game because essentially it kind of hit me when I was doing my research. People don't know what they don't know. Like uh, I did the video on Savage Finance talking about, you know, PayPal has two loans. They have a working capital loan, they have a business loan, and both of these loans can be gained with no credit check. A lot of people didn't know that. There's some people who knew it, but there's a lot of people who didn't know. And one of the things that I love about the Savage Finance crowd is no one is up in the comments saying, oh, you know, I've known about, I, you know, like over here, I don't get that over there. I get a lot of people who are helpful, who want to help people, who are put really positive comments and nowhere near as many trolls and yard birds and not even close to that over there. So I'm really enjoying Savage Finance and the things that are going over there. But essentially, I'm going to make it affordable to get more people playing the corporate game because going back to the food deserts, looking at Cascade and Camp Creek, this is where the black doctors live, the black CEOs, the black lawyers. They have the economic means and with some lobbying of these corporate interests, they got, they got what they wanted. So for us as a community to win, we're gonna have to start playing the corporate game. The Wall Street Chapter, I like that guy, he's pretty interesting. He said, you got three choices, stock, business ownership, and there was one other thing. And I'm on the business ownership tip because it is gonna be my goal to take 1,000 people and turn them into corporate citizens. Because once we turn 1,000 people into corporate citizens, because, you know, 
One of the things I've noticed is I've moved up the ladder and I've become more successful when I live. It's just, I just don't have certain things happen to me. Like I've been, I've been pulled over by the police twice in this neighborhood. Neither time was I disrespected, mistreated, nothing, you know, and it's just money matters. Money matters. Money matters. And I have a lot of people who are like, well, you black. Like, I've been black since 1966, and I've been in this neighborhood for like 12 years, and I just don't suffer stuff. I've like been into, I've gone to Phipps Plaza, I've gone to Lenox, I've gone into the finest stores, I've never been followed. It's just people, white people in Atlanta are used to and accustomed to seeing black people with money. They're used to it. It's normal. And we need to make that more normal because the money matters. The money is an important part of success, access, and upward mobility. So I just don't. Like, I just bought this Porsche. I mean, from the minute I walked in the dealership, they were so nice and attentive. I mean, I've got no less than 10 emails from them and they're really on it. And I'm black, but I'm getting treated like they treat all their customers. And this is the point I want to make. When you become a corporate citizen, you will be treated like a corporate citizen. You will be treated well. You will be like this whole thing with Oprah and the Birkin bags and stuff. I don't know anything about that, but I can honestly sit here and tell you since I've become a corporate citizen, I've not been discriminated against. Um, I've not been turned down for any loans that I went for. I've just not been mistreated, but I'm a corporate citizen. I am other than going back to the group of people who don't. One of the reasons I do these shows is to educate, to illustrate, and to show people what is possible. Because, you know, like I said, I am loving it over at Savage Finance. And maybe the love can return here because one of the things that is problematic, and I didn't start experiencing this for a long time when I was making crazy money, I didn't show that I was making money. I just had a bedroom in my apartment that I did the videos and no one really knew how I was living. And the problems didn't begin <laughs> until I started showing and talking about how successful I was. And if I say that I'm successful, like my stance on reparations, the fact that I've done well in life is a point of contention because you're looking at like, oh, he did well. Ask yourself, why aren't you doing well? Ask yourself in a contemplative manner. It's like, why am I not doing well? What in my life is holding me back? And be honest with yourself. And I guarantee you, you're gonna come up with some realizations that are gonna blow your mind. But one of the reasons I do this is there's a young me out there. There's a young man out there who doesn't have a father, who has no guidance. And I've get this a lot of times because sometimes I'm in public and people recognize me and they say, I love the videos. For a lot of people, I'm dad. For a lot of young men, some women, I'm dad. I'm the father they never had. I'm someone to sit here and like, look, if you do this and do this and you do this, your life would be good. Because a lot of people don't have that. They, they have no one that's saying, hey, this is how to be. This is how to do. No one. They're just out here on their own trying to figure stuff out in this repetitive generational situation of poverty. Because I understand that everyone can't pull themselves up by the bootstraps. And part of that is a lack of information. It's information asymmetry. Because one of the things that liberated me was I know more than most of y'all. And that's not me being an elitist motherfucker. That's just facts as represented by the life that I have built for myself. And why do I know more than most of y'all? Because I am a research hound. I live on research. 
I research, I research, I research, going back to my grandmother teaching me to read before I went to school. So I learned to love reading. I love, I learned to love the acquisition of knowledge. And if you did not have a similar background that I did, more than likely no one has ever made you appreciate reading or appreciate gaining knowledge because many people don't want to read books because books, you know, it's boring and stuff. So one of the reasons, well, many reasons I know more than y'all is I seek out the information, but this is how I was groomed and trained to be. And if you were not groomed and trained to be that way, more than likely you're not going to be that way. So this kind of comes back down to what I was saying, you know, typically whatever social strata that you're born in, it's going to be pretty much for 90% of the people, the same one that you're going to die in unless there comes some intervening event. And my big intervening event was the dissolution of my marriage and me ending up homeless. It was such a fast and furious descent that I hit the bricks. And it was very painful. And I was in a state of agony for about a good two and a half years. Every day was painful. Every day I was staring at, and I, and I had all these examples of people who had given up, people who had turned to alcoholism, people who had turned to drugs. And every day I was in pain. And I was like, I'm not happy here. I'm not happy here. I gotta do something. And this has got me on the path of research. This is how I found Earl Nightingale Lead the Field. This is how I found the power, you know, I was searching. I was seeking it out because I was in pain. I was in a lot of pain. And that pain, because it's a, a form of alchemy, I turned that pain to profit. And you can do it too, but you gotta have the right instructions. You gotta have the right sequencing. You gotta have the right blueprint. And you gotta know that this is possible. Because like I said, there's a young me out there who's just one day gonna pop on the YouTube, gonna come across these videos. It's like, yeah, I can do this. Okay, all right, he did it, I can do it too. And you know, th this is one of the things because I, I love the folks who accept me as their mentor. And there's a group of people who are so jealous, and I will use the term blatantly, that they cannot be helped because their ego is wounded because of my direct in your face style. Well, you know, he's being unkind to black folks. Telling the truth, it's telling the truth is being unkind. Okay, I, I'm, I'm unkind. Because one of the things you guys have got to understand is the truth is the truth. Whether you like it or not, it's going to deal with you on its own level. So if I don't tell you, it's like, you know, I can never be more unkind to you than life will be. Not even close. And one of the things that I want to get through to people is, is choices, is behavior, but it also starts with knowledge. It starts with the knowledge. It starts with that esoteric knowledge. It starts with seeking knowledge. It starts with, because one of the things is, I don't really watch a lot of television. I'm always researching, watching YouTube videos, getting new knowledge, reading books, reading blogs. And this is what keeps me going. This is, you know, because things constantly shift. But if you don't want to live in the food desert, you don't have to. And I don't think anyone has actually told a lot of people who are living in these food deserts. Because, you know, one of the things I learned when I was in the West End is that many people felt that they were trapped. There was no fence around the West End. There was no walls. There was no guard dogs. There were no guards. But they felt trapped because of the limitations of their thinking. And there are many, many people like, I'm here to tell you, can everybody be rich? No, it's not gonna happen. But can everyone have a, a satisfying, fulfilling middle-class life? Yeah, that's possible. That's very, very possible. Because, you know, and if you get on the corporate citizen tip, your odds of getting rich dramatically go through the roof. 
And there are so many people who run from that. And this is why we have all this rent seeking, Forex, day trading, Bitcoin. You know, you have all these people who want to invest in this asset just a little bit, not serve people, not build anything and get a lot of money, you know, secure the bag. So one of the things I want you guys to understand is today you have options, you have choices. And there's so many things you can do if you just make that decision to do it. So what I want you to do is go below, get on 30 days to 2,500, go below, get the hustler's mindset, pimp your mind for success, get that. And don't just get it because it's free, but actually go through the course and do the work. When you do the work, you will get results. And this will prep you to be a corporate citizen. Because like I said, that's going to come out probably end of this month or the 1st of September, because I'm in the process of restructuring my corporate structure. I created, you know, well, I had another holding company I created two years ago, and then I just created another operating company. And the, yesterday I set up another operating company and I, I got some bank, I, I got a new banking app that I'm gonna review for Savage Finance. And I'm getting ready to do a lot of stuff very differently than I did before. A lot of things are about to change. A lot of things are about to be extremely different, more professional. I'm going to hire myself two VAs. So there, there's going to be a lot of stuff that's going to go down. And also I just, you know, my goal is to take a thousand people, turn them into corporate citizens, because if I could turn a thousand people in corporate citizen, that's my legacy, man. Cause see, for every person that I touch, I'm going to touch 20 people. So for those thousand people that I turn into corporate citizens, it's going to exponentially reach to 25 to 50 people. And that's a pretty big influence because one of the things you gotta understand is the, the six degrees of separation, because let's say someone comes here and goes ahead and gets into the, takes this, the courses, become a corporate citizen, and then they marry someone because they became a corporate citizen, the person that they married and their children are gonna have a better life. And this is going to exponentially expand. You know, because like I said, I'm not doing too much business content over here because the channel's not geared for that, but I'm about to go crazy over at Savage Finance with the business content, with the corporate strategy, with uh, social economics, about to go nuts with that type of stuff because I love it. And that audience over there is receptive. Like this month, I've had three videos pop. Like I said, last video that popped over here was the rich people of Atlanta two years ago. So that channel's bumping, that's growing. A lot of energy is going over here. I will still do content over here, content like this, but it'll probably be once, maybe two videos a week or three videos a week or something like that. It just depends on what I want to do because most of my efforts and time is going to go into Savage Finance and the other channels. And to my little hating friend, you're so jealous. You're just so jealous. It's ridiculous. But with that, I will see you guys in the next one.